Good morning, everyone. Uh, let's get started. Uh, thank you, U89, for following me on Twitter already. Uh, <laughs> hi, uh, I'm Shubham. Uh, I work at Microsoft, and I'm a maintainer of Dapper's JavaScript SDK. So this morning, we'll talk about how you can write high-throughput applications using Dapper. So we'll start with seeing how some asynchronous messaging patterns work in general, and then how you could use Dapper with your uh, PubSub needs. And then we'll look at the newest addition to Dapper's PubSub block, the bulk APIs. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so uh, this is how a normal asynchronous messaging application looks like. You, you have your publisher, you have a few subscribers, uh, you have a Kafka uh, PubSub broker in this case. So your card can your card can publish events onto Kafka, and then um, and then Kafka sends those events to the subscribers. In this case, it's shipping and notification, and they can uh, do something with that event, process that, and so and so. Uh, you could also have an alternate model where you have multiple publishers. So you have multiple uh, publishers who generate events, send it to Kafka, and then you have a single um, subscriber listening for those. And you could have MS2 and any combination basically of publishers and subscribers. You could also do something like this, where you have the same replica, where you have multiple replicas of the same subscriber, and then each replica kind of helps in load balancing your events. So if you have, imagine if you have a lot of events, right, and you want to process them. Uh, so you could have multiple replicas doing that on your behalf. So uh, for, for those of you who don't know about Dapper, Dapper sits as a sidecar, and let's see how you could do a simple operation like publish and subscribe using Dapper. So each application has its own Dapper sidecar in the scenario. And what the cart application needs to do is uh, send this request to Dapper. So Dapper is a sidecar uh, on the port 3500. It's a well-defined port. And all you need to do is do a publish slash Kafka slash order. So publish is the operation. Kafka is the name of your broker and order is the topic name, and then you could send your data. And Dapper will then send this data to the PubSub queue. It will find where Kafka is, it will send the data to that. It will listen for data from the uh, PubSub queue as well, and then forward those data to the subscribed applications. And uh, in this case, Dapper can use any components it supports. So on the top, on the bottom right, you have a list of supported components, and Dapper supports a lot of PubSub components today. So you can check it out and note that your application does not need to change. So your application does not know if it's Kafka, if it's RabbitMQ, if it's Redis cache, all you need is this URL right here. Can I use a pointer? Yeah, this URL right here. So the PubSub name can be parameterized or you could, or you could just uh, manage it on your own. And then Dapper knows how to talk to SNS or Kafka or Azure service bus. So uh, let's look at some of the highlights of the Dapper's PubSub ecosystem, right? So Dapper ensures that you have at least once delivery. It ensures that each application that is published is also delivered to your subscribers at least once. Uh, it has some concepts of uh, consumer groups. So Dapper, Dapper automatically creates consumer groups on your behalf. It also allows you to have a competing consumer group patterns. And we'll look at these patterns in our demo uh, really quick. Uh, you also have built-in resiliency. So with Dapper, when you go out to do PubSub operations, you get retries, uh, timeouts, circuit breakers out of box. So this is how it looks like, right? So uh, you get resiliency on both the inbound and outbound part of things. And yeah, so Dapper talking to, publishing data onto the broker, and then Dapper sending data to your subscriber, uh, it's, it's all resilient. And then uh, even after resiliency, you get a dead letter topic support. If your resiliency policies still fail to deliver some message, you have built-in support for dead letter uh, topics. And finally, you have bulk messaging, which is recently introduced, and we'll talk about that in the future slides. Uh, also note that on the right side, uh, we have something called a component spec. So this is how you tell Dapper that, hey, um, I have a Redis component, which is of type pubsub.redis, and it's located at this host, this is the password, and that's how you connect with it. So that's all you need uh, to connect to Redis. And you could just swap it out with a different component. In this case, it's an Azure Event Hub component, and the metadata changes, and that's it. So that's all you need to do to tell Dapper how to talk to these components. Um, so yeah, let's look at a really quick demo. Uh, let me just stop sharing this presentation. Okay, I hope you can see it. 
i'll zoom it in a bit yeah okay so we'll just start looking at really simple operations how to publish some data onto a pub sub broker how to subscribe to that data so uh, for publishing let's look at the http way of it first uh, so i'm not using any dapper sdks we'll look at that in a bit but if you want to post a data to dapper all you need to do is have this url so in in my demo in this case dapper runs as a process locally in my computer so i could just go go and tell hey dapper just publish this data onto a pubsub called pubsub. So uh, just to FYI, if you install Dapper via the Dapper CLI, um, you get this pubsub component inbuilt and Redis is already like spun up for you. So all you need to do is talk to this pubsub component and let me show you how it works. Um, let me just, so what I can do is I can just start a, I can just start a publisher app like this. So I have an app ID and um, I have a Dapper HTTP port, which is 3500 in this case. And I just want to start my Dapper and I don't have any application in this case. It's just a sleep and we'll just use the HTTP call directly to talk to Dapper. So yeah. So this has like my Dapper is now up and running and what I can do is just send this request. So it says 204 no content, which means it, it was able to publish everything. And what I have is a GUI. Mm. Oh, it's this one. Yeah, so let me open that really quick. And I can connect to my local Redis. And now I can see this data that's being published already. So let me just show you in a different tab here. So if I format this. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, if you see, this is the data that got published and it's a cloud event. So what I published was this actual data and Dapper talks in cloud event by default uh, in PubSub. So this is a cloud event. You have things like trace ID, a trace parent, the cloud event ID itself, and so and so. So this is a simple example of publishing. And I could also like not use a cloud event. So in case you have subscribers that don't speak in cloud events, you could go ahead and just publish without it. So all you need is this extra uh, query parameter called raw payload is true. And if I send a request like this and just refresh this, so this one is plain JSON. There's no cloud event here. So yeah, that's how you could like subscribe. And uh, if you if I also want to, uh, sub, if I, that's how you could publish, sorry. And if you want also want to subscribe, I have a simple subscriber application written here. This is in Python and there's no extra dependencies. It just uses the default Python web servers. And there are two important parts. First one is this, which is dapper slash subscribe. So whenever dapper starts, right, it goes to your application and it goes to this endpoint and asks, hey, application, which uh, subscriptions do you want to subscribe to? And what I res respond with is this. <laughs> so I have a pub sub uh, and the topic name is examples. And this is the route. And dapper will then start sending me messages on this route. Um, in this example, I'm just printing that out. So that's it. And I'm sending back a success status. You could also send back a, uh, you know, maybe a retry or a drop uh, to Dapper. So, but yeah, in this example, I'm sending a success. So let me just try to run this one really quick. So app ID, yeah. So uh, the protocol is HTTP. The port on which my server is running is 3000. And the command is just python subscriber.py. And yeah, there you go. So uh, a few things first. So if you look at it, uh, first this dapper slash subscribe was called, and then uh, dapper says I'm subscribed to these topics. So the topic name is examples, and pubsub name is pubsub, and then I receive these messages. So this is the one without cloud event, and this is the one with cloud event. So yeah, this is how simple publish and subscribe works. Let me stop these and minimize this. So let's also look at another example where I'm using the JavaScript SDK. So uh, you saw how to do it using HTTP uh, by directly, but if you want to use SDKs, it makes your life simpler. So let's look at this example. We have two applications. One is the publisher service. If you look at package.json, it just has one dependency called Dapper. Uh, there is, there's no other dependency on uh, any Kafka SDK or any Redis SDK, but there's only one on Dapper. And this is my um, index.js file. So what I do is I create an infinite loop, I create a random order, and I publish it. So this is the only thing I need to do. pubsub.publish, name, uh, pubsub name, topic name, and the actual data. 
so that's it and let's also look at the subscriber application mm, same for this one so there's only one dependency dapper and if you look at the index.js this is a really an upgrade from the http version so if you look at this all you need all you need to do is uh, have a subscribe method and this this is a callback so uh, this actually this is a place where you get your message so uh, in this example i'm just logging it out but you see there's no dapper slash subscribe the sdk takes care of that for you so yeah it's really simple and easy to write your own sdk version of it and um, so in this demo i'll be running these on kubernetes so i have a local um, kind cluster setup and if i show you i should have um, let me zoom out a bit Yeah, so I have the Dapper control plane already up and running. I have uh, Kafka and Redis uh, uh, applications here running, and this is the cube system. So let me just try to really quickly deploy my sample application. Um, so first I deployed the uh, Redis uh, component, and this is nothing but a configuration uh, that shows up here. And I can also show you that it, it just, so this just points to the Redis that exists in my cluster already. So the host and password, and this is coming from a secret store, by the way, instead of using a password directly. So that's it. And let me also apply the publisher and subscriber configurations now. So these are Kubernetes deployment specs. And so there we go. Ah, sorry. Yeah. So yeah, they're, they're up and running. We should be able to see them here now. Mm, yeah uh, okay this is up and running so let's look at the logs and see what what's happening inside so if i go and do a cube tail uh, let me just split this so yeah the publisher is up and running it's already publishing data already and if i look at the subscriber oh my bad yeah so uh, you see that the subscriber is receiving data and publisher is publishing data this is running on kubernetes Great. Uh, let's look at a few more things, right? So uh, what I can do is I can scale up my uh, number of replicas. So let me do something like, so what I want to do is have three replicas for my subscriber application and let's just do that. So it, it got scaled up. And if I now go to, if I now start this uh, logging again, um, I'll be able to see my replicas. So my replicas are starting now and you could see that they, they each got a subscription up and running. So now um, these replicas should load balance my events. So if you look at this, uh, different replicas are receiving uh, events now. And that's is, is as, as simple as that. So when you have different replicas, Dapper automatically um, load balances the load for you. And uh, in parallel, I could also start another subscriber service, identical. So if you have, let me show you really quick. Yeah. So when you have a new subscriber running, it behaves as a queue. Basically it behaves as a topic and it sends the same event to both the subscribers. So I could just do this and, and this is getting all the events now. So both the subscribers are getting their own events basically. And the one with multiple replicas is getting load balance. So yeah, this is how, like, this is the competing consumers pattern where you get uh, different, where, where different replicas get one message each. And then the consumer group pattern where different uh, application IDs get the same events. So yeah, this is how it works. And now what I can do is a really interesting thing that people often do. Uh, say I want to use Kafka instead of Redis. All this while I was using Redis. But if I want to use Kafka, all I want to do is um, apply a Kafka spec. So now if I see, I have two components, Kafka and Redis, and I can remove Redis for that matter. Let me go ahead and do that. Um, yeah not everything but just the redis one and i have deleted redis now so what i want to do is um just let my applications know that hey the uh the name of the pub sub has changed and instead now use kafka so earlier they were pointing to redis and now i have it updated the environment variable to use kafka so that's all i need to do and if i look at the logs again right uh by the way it, it should have already restarted my application so if I look at the logs again, yeah. Okay, so now this is running on Reddit, on Kafka and listening to everything. And same for publisher. 
I just I can just do this cube tail and it's publishing on Kafka. And how I can uh, confirm is by taking this ID and going in like this. So, uh, yeah, if you can see this uh, API call, this is going to Kafka. So it's as simple to switch components. You don't need to learn how Kafka works. You don't need to learn how Redis works. All you need to do is just let Dapper know I want to talk to these components. So, yeah, uh, that was it for the demo for now. And let me jump back to this. So, yeah. Uh, now we can look at some of the new improvements that we introduced in the Dapper pub sub block and uh, two major parts of it. So first is the API itself. So using the bulk API, what you can do instead of publishing events one by one, you could publish like a bulk of events to Dapper. And then what Dapper does is, is it forwards the events um, in parallel published request to the pub sub queue. Similarly, while receiving, Dapper will receive events for you, buffer them for some time, and then send it as a bulk to your uh, subscribing app. And this improves the latency between uh, the application and the Dapper by a lot. And also Dapper can make parallel publish requests now, which is even faster than making a single request. Uh, furthermore, if the PubSub component also supports bulk, you could also optimize it further. So the Dapper sidecar can also talk to the broker as uh, in, in bulk request. Uh, it can be on the publish end, it can be on the subscribing end. Uh, just to give you some highlights, it's available as an alpha API from 1.10, which we released a few weeks back. Uh, it's highly performant because uh, now you have optimized uh, Dapper to application as well as Dapper to broker communication with the bulk APIs. Uh, it's non-transactional, so if you are sending, say, 1,000 messages, maybe 990 can fail and uh, 10 can pass, or the other way, right? So you, uh, what Dapper does it, it lets you know which one failed and you can retry them. And uh, there's no guarantee for any ordering. If you're sending 100 messages in bulk, they can re be received in any order and sent in any order. Uh, and what you have is unique IDs by which you can identify your messages. So yeah, that helps you. And uh, let's really quickly look at how the pub sub, the bulk APIs work. So let me, I'll just minimize this. And yeah, so uh, like the HTTP example for pub sub, I have this bulk uh, API here. So it's a simple HTTP request. So this is an alpha API. Uh, it uses publish slash bulk, and this is the name of the pub sub as usual. This is the topic name. Now notice the content, and in here I have an entry ID. This is the unique message ID I need to tell Dapper for my message, and this is the actual message and the type, the content type. So I could send um, text as plain or JSON or cloud event, whatever I want. And let's just spin up a Dapper sidecar. So I just copy this command. And let me try to run this. So it says 204, no content again, and it should have published both the messages. And I have my Medis GUI to check that. So I got this new uh, uh, topic, bulk examples, and these are the two messages. So this is the first message, this is the second message. And I got both, the, both of them in my uh, pubsub queue. And I could also uh, publish like without a cloud event. So I could just send this. Again, I got a 204, and if I refresh, I got two more messages. Now they are not wrapped in cloud events. So this is how the bulk publish uh, API works. And similarly, I won't be running subscriber, but you can, you can just check how easy it is. It is exactly the same as uh, the other subscriber, but you have a bulk subscribe enabled true. So this tells Dapper that receive in bulk. And then when you actually get the message, uh, you have to kind of parse it and figure out where's the entry ID event and what are the status of the, and, and respond back with some statuses. And this is where the SDK comes into picture and makes your life really simpler. So if I go back to my demo, so this is the only change required to start using the bulk API via the JavaScript SDK. Uh, earlier we would be publishing it one by one and now we'll do a publish bulk. That's it. Instead of sending one message, you send a bulk of messages and JavaScript API. Uh, it's really simple. Uh, for subscribe, it's even simpler. So if you notice this, the only change is the subscribe method is now called subscribe bulk. 
the callback also remains the same. So in the callback, you get you still get messages one by one. But behind the scenes, it's optimized for you. It's it's being received in received in bulk. So yeah, that's the best part. So your callback your callback remains exactly the same when you migrate to using bulk API. And uh, we did. We did uh, try it out, we did see how fast it is, and it was phenomenal. Uh, for publish, you could already see the P95 uh, became 55 milliseconds from 176 in this performance test. And these, uh, all these tests are on the Dapper repo if you want to go and check. And uh, for bulk subscribe, again, we did a similar test, and you could see the latency really dropping the P95 and P50. And this is a graphical comparison if you want to look at it. And yeah, that was for my talk and thank you so much. And you could go and check out the Dapper repo here and join our Discord community, follow us on Twitter. And yeah, we have community calls, so you can come and check out those as well. So uh, here are some links and here's the QR code for the presentation. I'll be sharing the presentation as well as the code uh, shortly. Yeah, on schedule, sched app. So yeah, thank you. Okay. Any questions? Uh, yeah. Sure. There's a mic. You can you can take the mic and ask. Yeah. Um, all these features that you uh, present are also available in Azure Container Apps. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you so, mean the Dapper integration on yes, Azure? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Um, second question is: uh, Are you implying that I can use uh, I can replace Kafka? completely and use a pops up uh, pattern with Dapper altogether. Yeah, in theory you could. So uh, unless you are extremely invested in Kafka, unless you're doing really specific fine tunings, you could come and use Dapper. And there have been like users who have reported like really great performance with the bulk API, comparing it with the Confluent SDK directly. And it was really great. So yeah, you could. And But if you are like really into Kafka, then probably you're better with Kafka. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the enlightening talk. Um, you mentioned that there is uh, no in-order processing. Is that also true if uh, you're sending to the same topic, or is it, is it a general theme? Yeah, it, it is in general. Like, uh, the order is not preserved in bulk APIs. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Uh, I was wondering uh, if you can use the bulk functionality separate. So. For example, if you can use the bulk publish, but still use the single consume part. Yeah, you can do that, absolutely. Those are orthogonal APIs, so you could use mix and match. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, who is uh, acknowledging the messages or in case of Kafka committing the offsets, especially in the case of bulk APIs? Thank you. Yeah, so the application is responsible to respond back with the status and then Dapper responds back to Kafka and does the actual checkpointing. So without yeah. that, Kafka will keep retrying and Dapper will again keep retrying. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Uh I have a question about a uh, non-transactional uh, problem with the bulk messaging. Yeah. So that is not transactional between uh, Dapper and Kafka or Dapper between the other Dapper that we're communicating with applications? So generally when your application is talking to uh, your uh, Dapper instance, right? It is non-transactional. Now the underlying implementation might vary. Uh, in some case, maybe the underlying implementation is transactional, but on the uh, dapper to application level, it's always non-transactional. So that's for the application like to deal with it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Like one example of this is uh, maybe, um, I, I don't know if it's GCP batch or something, but there's one component that only has transactional support, but still dapper treats it as non-transactional because of the API. So the API does not guarantee that. Hey, uh, on the bulk consumption, does it also split it like in chunks and you can have multiple consumers at the same time or the entire bulk is just given to one of the consumers? Uh, you, you could have multiple consumers. So you could again go back and have, um, 
this pattern somewhere so you have multiple consumers and both of them are getting their own bulks yeah but if i publish a bulk let's say with 100 elements inside of it will it be 100 elements given to only one of the replicas or does it somehow split the bulk yeah if you have different replicas then yeah you will get different bulk for each replica like you, different set of messages for each replica you have to so load balance the bulk is split in, yeah. in chunks to and given somehow load balance to all the all that, all of them. that's correct so when you do a bulk publish that bulk gets published and then that's it mm -hmm. on the subscribing it, it's a fresh set of messages in a bulk okay it's a subset of that yeah, okay, it's I got not it. the and on the on the when we publish it and if the set is too high what should we take into considerations exactly so there, there are some there are some metadata that you could see and each component has its own maximum bulk limit so that way you have to figure out what component you are using and uh, there's also on the subscribing end also there are some parameters you could fine tune so yeah it depends on what component you're using i got it thank you yeah Any other questions? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you for listening.